uh, some of the benefits of 5G and how we've been able to make uh, this technically possible and what better way to show what is technically possible than to show it through New Zealand's first 5G holographic call. And who better to help me with this is our Chief Technology Officer, Tony, let's have a crack at this and see. <laughs> to make you about this big. <laughs> uh, yeah. Job one wasn't done, but it's okay. We're probably more like uh, life sites, which is all good. How are you feeling? Yeah. Oh, good. I, I actually thought this is a bit beaming and live over 5G. I sort of thought it was a bit like something back in a 90s sci-fi movie. Hopefully I look a bit more like Han Solo than Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do. You look good, mate. Well done. Hey, first of all, uh, congratulations to you and, uh, and your team. What a phenomenal effort. As I mentioned through um, in the atrium, uh, you guys have just been doing it, not talking about it, and all the testing, the work you've been doing with, a partner, with, your, with your partners to get us into this position where we can be confident about launching in December in Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch and Queenstown and then more to come. You must be feeling super <coughs> awesome and stoked. I am actually, it's really, really humbling that the team's worked so hard on this. Um, I'd like to thank you know, my team especially, but also our partners. We've had Harrison Greeson on the structural and civil. We've had uh, Downers on the field services construction. And we've also had uh, Nokia, obviously, on the radio technology. But what's really great about it is the team has actually worked as a single entity. They've all come together. There's no us, them. It's one single team working on this. And I know the rollout's going to be super successful. So I'm really chuffed about that. And as, as you already mentioned, we're coming in live over 5G. This is not a, a fake 5G. This is a real standards-based 5G. And if you look up to your um, right in the audience, you'll see a, um, a small white object. That is actually a real 5G in-home uh, fixed wireless access unit. It's bringing in 5G at about one gigabit per second. It's powering this uh, hologram and also a number of the other displays that are out there today. So this is a real demonstration. Thanks, Thanks awesome. Well, look, uh, look, look, Tony, there's a whole bunch of benefits that 5G uh, will, will, uh, will deliver. Uh, one of which we've talked a lot about is uh, speed. Can you give us a bit more uh, insight yeah, into how this, how this works from a speed perspective? I don't know if you guys can remember this. I do. This is a 2G, top of the line, Nokia hands, 25 years old. Up used to <laughs> voice and <laughs> application of choice, but one kilobit per second. When we launch 5G, we'll be talking about one gigabit per second, and the 5G standards go up to 20 gigabits per second at this point. So we're talking about um, a million-fold improvement in performance in just 25 years. I mean, is that not just amazing? That is incredible. Much better than my Commodore 64 I bought from Smith City in like 1984 or something like that. <laughs> Absolutely. This is amazing. Well, it weighs a bit. I'm going to have to put it down. It's pretty heavy and it doesn't fit in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. Good man, good man. And in terms of from a technical perspective, how do you create that kind of speed advantage from 4G to 5G? What technically happens? Yeah, so look, um, 2G, as I said, was about voice and SMS. 4G was really the first data specialist technology. Yep. 5G takes it to that next level. So 4G, 5G, pure data service, pure data for voice, pure data for all the applications we'll talk about later. But what's really cool about it is uh, the first release we're using 3.5 gigahertz radio. Um, I worked on 3.5 gigahertz radio when I was in research and development uh, over 20 years ago in the UK. So it's taken quite a long time to mature that technology to say the least. But that gives us huge bandwidth. So that's one area. The other big area for us is uh, what's called massive MIMO antennas. Uh, in the lamp you'll see later on a 64 by T64R, which is transmit receive. Uh, antenna. Those beams in there, 64 of them, will tailor their um, coverage to the presence in the area. So a stadium would get in stadium coverage and then follow people outside. It would follow you down the street. If you're in a high rise building, it will go up and down the building. So you start to get something like a spotlight following the usage patterns. So we start to get really high performance with massive bandwidth in a higher radio frequency. So that's really where we're launching in that space. Awesome. But wait, there's more. We've also heard about kind of uh, reduced lag uh, and latent, lower latency. Give us a, 
an idea from a technical, but also from a benefit perspective on what yeah, that means. absolutely. So latency or lag is the time it takes for something to happen to actually experience it on your device or application. And look, when we launched the 4G car some time ago, one of our big issues was to make sure we didn't hit a tree when we were driving it because what we saw wasn't exactly where we were on the road. With 5G, you're going down to 10 milliseconds latency. With 4G, it was about 40 milliseconds latency. That's the sort of first release. And then with what's called mobile edge computing, pushing some of that processing power out into the base stations, you're starting to see sub one millisecond, and that's going to be great for precision agriculture, drones, automobiles, the list goes on. That's where really it starts to get exciting. Now we're also proud that uh, we're number one in New Zealand in IoT, and uh, 5G is also looking like it's going to uh, be the next era of, uh, of IoT, but also the applications that IoT will, will drive. Give us a flavour for the applications and, and what the next generation of IoT looks like coming our way. Yeah, absolutely. So with 5G, um, we'll be launching the, the one of the big areas with 5G is you can actually stratify the network. It's called network slicing, Jason. So we'll be able to do things like emergency services radio networks for police and others as they move away from legacy two-way radios, move into the era of 5G. They'll be able to get their own emergency services layer built into the network. So that's one area of application. Then I think earlier on you were talking about you know, health and agriculture and other things. So let's just talk about connected health for a minute, something I'm really passionate about because I think it's really going to help New Zealanders and help New Zealand see some benefits. Envisage if you can, you're in the hospital, you've got documentation and records, they're normally paper-based, immediately they become uh, electronic, they're able to be interchanged between uh, departments, between sites. Uh, if you're a rural GP and you uh, need some training, you can get online, you can actually interact with specialists worldwide to get that training, so online training and courses lifts rural medicine up to a new level. You add artificial intelligence and other things to that and you start getting really good diagnoses out in the rural areas, something that we've been lacking in times. And then you extend that out to the triage. You've got the Westpac helicopter we're talking about. You've got the ambulances. They start to have video. They start to have IoT. They can actually do triage and access a lot of information backwards and forwards to the hospital. So something really exciting. I mentioned IoT. Um, I, I wonder, is uh, Scott out there or I can't really see? Scott Pollard talked about maybe IoT. There he is. Scott. Scott. <coughs> Um, hi everybody, I'm, uh, I'm not a hologram, <laughs> I guess I don't think I'm a hologram, uh, and I thought it was very clever Tony because the, uh, the hologram looks very impressive, the oh, only thanks. time it broke up slightly was when you picked up the 2G phone which made the point <laughs> so um, hey look this is bloody exciting from an IoT perspective um, for my team and for the people that we work with. Last year, we maintained our network leadership position by rolling out two IoT network technologies, and they delivered a bit of battery life, um, better coverage in the design for millions of connected devices uh, to be connected to our network. Um, but there's a distinction as we go to the next level for 5G. So that network technology to date has been primarily around monitoring and asset management. As we go forward into the future, it's about control and automation. And I think that that's the distinction that we're starting to see with some of these real life use cases. Tony mentioned the triage, which is you know, gonna save lives. Um, but in addition to that, you can see everything from how we manage traffic flows across a city like Auckland, which some of us would have experienced this very morning, uh, right through to how we're gonna transform the agriculture and the horticultural sector with the use of AI and 5G to manage robotics so we can start to look at what's the optimal quality of export fruit and um, start to increase the yield for, for those businesses in New Zealand. So super excited, um, really proud for Vodafone, really proud for New Zealand and congratulations Tony to you and your magnificent team. So thank you. Thank you. Very much. But uh, to enable 5G, you and the team have had to uh, do a lot of upgrades with our core network, which will also benefit 4G and also fixed wireless access at the same time, won't it? Yeah, so Jason, um, as we said before, we were the first with 2G, 3G, 4G, and now um, again with 5G. As, pa as part of that evolution, and we support all those technologies today, we've had to do a lot of upgrades across the network to be 5G ready. 
Um, that includes the core network moving to voice over LTE from the traditional voice, which is now live. Uh, there was a lot of work in the back end for that. Making sure we had fiber optics to all of our south sites because you really need a really solid backhaul for 5G. Uh, you know, talking 10 gigabits per second per south site, base level backhaul connectivity. <laughs> Uh, and then obviously all the cell towers themselves will be needed to be upgraded. As part of that upgrade, uh, and as part of that rollout, we're talking about 125G upgrades between now and Christmas, roughly, roughly. Uh, that includes cell sites on wheels. As we're rolling that out, and progressively 5G gets rolled out to all of New Zealand over the next few years, we are also upgrading our 4G to 4.5, 4.9G. So we're doing 400 4G upgrades between now and the new year. Uh, and will be more beyond that. So the whole of New Zealand will be covered by 4.5G and progressively 5G as we continue this rollout. This is a massive investment and a massive amount of work and uh, you know, I really thank the team and the partners for, for supporting us on that. That's awesome. Thanks, Tony. And ultimately, all of that technology investment just means better connectivity for our customers, which is what ultimately we care about. Thanks for joining me on New Zealand's first 5G holographic call. Tony, well done. Thanks.